Welcome to my free to play early game commander guide. Uh, in this guide, I want you to have a, an open mind because some of the choices I make for commanders are not what other YouTubers recommend or not what you perhaps have been told to do with your commanders. But I want you to keep an open mind uh, and really judge me perhaps on my results and to have the mindset of looking at the job you need to complete and then how can I use the commanders to complete that job as opposed to just looking at the commanders or pairing them up or doing duels with them. So firstly, why should you trust my commander guide? Well, let's have a look. Um, it's Kingdom Day 19. Let's have a look. Kingdom Day... Um, yep, Kingdom Day, sorry, 18 and 20 hours. So not quite 19 yet. And I am currently top of the ranks for the qualifying for uh, the Sunset Canyon Tournament. Which certainly would suggest uh, I know a little bit about Commanders. Uh, also, I'm on level Expedition without Tier 4. I'm on Expedition level number 50. Which again suggests, and I've 3 starred right up to 49. And the last thing I'll show you is here I say my daily ranks for Sunset Canyon. But then here we are, protect the supplies. I also managed rank three on that again without tier four. So that's my CV, shall we call it. Uh, if you think that's impressive, then perhaps I have something you might want to hear. So again, I'm not going to go through the commanders. What I'm going to do is go through jobs that you need to complete early game and then tie that back to the commanders I would use or I am using. So, the first job you might want to do early game is forts. But you actually have two choices on forts. If you're in a large, viable alliance, then you're going to have to be surrounded by people with Minamoto and Cow Cow. And the truth is, no one's going to do a fort better than them. So I have made the decision on this account that I'm only going to run Fort 1 and 2 with my commanders. Which means I just use Loha and Sun Tzu or Loha and Ethelfled uh, and I have not yet ran or led a Fort 3. But should you want to run a Fort 3 then these are the three choices for you. Is of course Belarus uh, when properly with enough skills and properly talented can of course run Fort 3s and above. Boudicca again, if enough heads are put into her and the talents are correct, she can run Fort 3s and above. And Lohar can, but his talents need to be correct. You definitely need to avoid the double-edged sword. And for Lohar, you can turn him into a really universally useful commander who can still kill barbarians if you have Rejuvenate which massively increases the, the damage and healing of the skills that he has. So if three points are spent here, it's 150 rage eight when the first commander casts and when the second commander casts, which bring forward attacks by three seconds, heals and attacks. Also, don't forget this one if you're going to run uh, forts with Loha. But let's move on. Forts are pretty simple. Let's move on to Barbarians. Again, another pretty simple one. There's only really two commanders that can help you. And these are the ones that have bonus experience. Killing Barbarians early game is really easy. It doesn't really matter who you use. But of course, you want bonus XP, which is Loha and Boudicca. Uh, she gets 20% and he gets... Fortunately, I've been a little unlucky with my heads and he's only got 30% at the moment. The next thing you want in the back of your mind, though, for Barbarians is more for the, the pros, which is any commander with an area of effect, especially with Ethelfled is the best here, of course, where they're able to Barbarian chain, so Loha would be front, and then an area of effect commander, any of them, so Barbers, Barbers or uh, the Archer Commander here, any of those that can hit in an area of effect, of course, will help you Barbarian chain. Right, let's move on to Expedition for a moment. 
it's really important to progress expedition and the faster you do it the earlier you do it the more you earn as a daily income the better your ethel fled will be and the more commander sculptures you'll be able to pick up early so it is important really important if you're interested in sunset arena the this section is built into is split into three first you have your level fives and level tens who are your single target hit so let's talk about the commanders i use there so of course uh, I, I i tank with sun tzu but the but what you want on the single target hits are the debuffers which of course is ethel fled because she reduces health, uh, defense, and attack. And then the other important commander for debuffing is right down here. I don't use them for anything else, but on the single target kills, it's really important that you use El Cid because uh, not only does he have uh, a reasonably good attack, but he disables active skills and normal attack for one second. This keeps your commander or your tanking commander up longer. Uh, it's not a heal, but of course it reduces the attack they take that turn. Really important. For the later ones, although uh, I haven't got enough um, uh, enough heads or I haven't been lucky enough on the gold keys to progress them, but to for the single target kills, you also want rage reduction. So rage reduction 50 reduces their attack by a second uh, but of course you want to get that up to 100 if you can the other rage reduction is Boudicca again I believe where is it rage reduction 60 so those two together would reduce the rage by 110 but of course that would be the same as two seconds because as their rage is continuing to take 110 away would then take two seconds to recover so using Elsid, Boudicca and I always forget this lady's name, this one here is Senuk, you could significantly reduce the output of a single target kill in Expedition. Next up in Expedition is of course the multiple kill levels where you're up against um, five different targets but of course this is really as simple as uh, you want to put out your commanders that put out the most skill damage. Let's see if we can show here. So, Ethelfled, if she hits five targets, is putting out more damage than Minamoto. Because it's 800 times five, which is, oh, significant. Oh, I've missed one. Going to move forward a bit. There we go. So that should be all five on me now. Target this one. And there you go. Did you see the skill damage go off? Hits three. Hits five. But of course, you need to do this with more than one march as you get stronger. So for those takedown levels in Expedition, you need to get the five one ones on uh, commanders like Barbears. I can't say his name. And the Archer Epic here, who also hits three targets. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the Hemd, again, hits three targets. These are the commanders that you need to take down those levels. And they're also going to cross over into being useful in Sunset Canyon. Before we go there, though, I want to quickly just talk about the bonus levels. That people often confuse these bonus levels that they're... They are a test of your commanders, but uh, for example, 42 here, 40-2 uh, here, is more a test of your castle. So if I just pop anyone in there. So the march coming in now is 746,000. It should be 750 because my castle is 750. Let's have a look. Where's my castle? So, oh, oh I don't know why that wasn't filled. But anyhow, 
let's say that uh, that bonus level is more a test of your castle and of course the other bonus level is more a test of your watchtowers and your garrison lead which of course this early should always be Sun Tzu so let's now move on to Sunset Canyon so this splits into four different categories the first thing I want you to do when you look through your commanders is simply ask for Sunset Canyon, are they a team player? Being a team player means they hit people, uh, not just the one in front of them, but in a fan shape hit others. So, so Art of War, um, Sandstorm, and Arrow of Iron, these all hit other targets as well as the target in front of them making them team players uh, another example of course is Joan who doesn't hit other targets but buffs other targets really really important uh, now let's talk about front line early front line in sunset uh, you won't need this really to be the early tanks have to be infantry so let's have a look at Sun Tzu and why is he such a great tank. So firstly, you've got the infantry talents, which is the chance to reduce damage by 20%, which is obviously fantastic. The 6% health, again, fantastic. Um, and when your army is below 50%, increase uh, defense by 6%. So really tanky talents there, absolutely fantastic. And there's also, of course, the reduced skill damage, which is more important than you, you might think, especially for Sunset. So that's the setup of your tank. But Sun Tzu has one more um, trick up his sleeve, that his master strategist skill is double effect for defense. By double effect, I mean, if we look at one of the other commanders, here's another infantry commander, so... He could have the same talents, fantastic. But when we get to his skill, uh, Battle of Sao Su, whatever it is, it's split. Half of it's defense and half of it's attack. But your front line needs the defense more than it needs the attack. So, although he's got the right talents, he his, I say, his defense, it's, his skill here is split between attack and defense, but we don't want that. We want all of the front line defenses, all of the front line skills to be as much defense as possible, which is what makes Sun Tzu so great in your front line in Sunset Canyon. I also use in my front, set, front line in Sunset Canyon, City Keeper. So, uh, part of early game commanders is your ability to manage your epic and gold stars. By using City Keeper, I take the stress off my universal epic heads. I take the stress off my um, epic stars. Um, and if you look at the skills, they're not that bad. So 15% of defense, but for five seconds, that's pretty significant. 5% health, pretty significant. 5% attack, pretty good. And infantry defense, another 5%. So that's pretty strong. Also, City Keeper has a little secret. He's got the attack talents, which if we have a look down, he's got reduce all damage taken by 1.5%, which is pretty significant. He also has the increased attack by 6%, but it decreases your skill damage by 3%, which of course doesn't matter because he doesn't do any skill damage. And if you put him with... Joan or Cleo, it doesn't matter even further for the second commander. He also has this really powerful skill here. 1.5 uh, attack times his stars. And he's got five stars. So that's, um, God, what is that? 7.5%, um, which is huge. I mean, there's no item he has gives 7.5% attack. So... Let's have a look. That's a, talking about the front line. Also for the front line, a lot of people don't know this or would disagree with this or certainly ridicule me for doing this. But I also like to use Siege in my front line. What do we got here? So Expert Design, that's 6% in Defence, 6% in Health. 
and the 6% in attack is just a bonus. We have the reduced skill damage. Well, I haven't finished it, sorry, but that will be up to 9% on the next talent, which is huge. Let's also have a look here. 15% <coughs> increase to defense when you are at below 15%. Again, huge. Uh, and of course, good for tanking in the front line, 3% of troop capacity. So support is, in my opinion, a very viable um, talent for your front line. So that's my front line in Sunset Canyon, Sun Tzu, City Keeper, and Joan of Arc. Now let's have a look at the back line. So the first thing you need to know about the back line is there's a real bonus available if you're able to reduce counter uh, counter attack damage. So the commanders that can do that are Ethel Fled, of course, uh, and that gets up to 20%. So soon, her being in the back line of my Sunset team, that 20% will be worth a lot more because you only receive counter attack damage in the back line of your Sunset Canyon team. Let's also have a look at the talents of uh, conquering really valuable reduce counterattack damage by nine percent so let's think about this if this commander is in the back row of sunset canyon this reduced counterattack damage by nine percent is as valuable as the reduced damage by eight percent that that is more valuable than the reduced damage taken on Sun Tzu that's because he's in the back line he's only receiving counter-attack damage so you can really buff up or reduce the damage your back line is taking with counter-attack damage but of course your back line is your DPS or your damage per second and this commander is wonderful at that of course he hits three targets with 750 but you can improve on that if you put him with the right commander. So let's go, let's just do some testing. Now I love testing, uh, so don't take anything I'm telling you as gospel. You can do your own testing and see if you can improve on what I'm saying. And I'd love to hear about it in the comments. But let's just do a little bit of testing. So we're going to let's take these commanders out. Let's put... Let's put him in the front line there. And I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I want the march to be full, of course. Oh, for goodness sake. Here we are. So, march full. Brilliant. No, it's not. Okay, 140,000. So let's go. Let's look at the attack. And the first skill hit. So the attack would be probably over a thousand odd. And then let's look at the first skill hit. So first attack is 1026. And the skill hit is just coming now. 1778. So brilliant. Let's now test this again, but let's uh, this time we're going to put Sun Tzu with him, uh, and Sun Tzu increases damage by eight percent. Fantastic! So let's have a look. Sun Tzu, though, of course, has no uh, skills which will increase the amount of attack, so it should be one o two six again for the attack. which it is, 1026 for the white damage. And then here comes the skill, which should be 8% more. Bang, 1929, so that's pretty good. Let's see if we can push it further. Let's now pair him with the often forgotten about Mahem, or, and off we go. So this time we've got the 8% to attack and the 8% to skill. So the white damage should increase and the skill damage should increase. So 1026 goes to 1094. 
and the skill damage should be a significant jump because the skill is higher, the attack's higher. Bang. 2041. Now you might be thinking, well, that's only an extra 300 skill damage, but remember, this this commander can hit three commanders when he's in sunset or when he's in the expedition doing the multi uh, fighting levels. So that's not 300, that's 900. So can you see how the commander pairings can massively uh, change the damage output? So let's just go and have a look at my sunset team. But before we do, we're going to talk about this commander here. Now, Tommen is actually a lot better than she looks. The reason for this is she has um, something quite rare, which is two really strong talent uh two really strong talent trees for attacking so not only does she have the extra 30 percent attack bonus the extra archer attack there the reduced damage there and the rage gain uh and also this reduced damage here sorry what is that oh no she doesn't have that skill bonus because she's the first commander but she has this reduced damage when she casts a skill but let's look at these talents a moment Oh, sorry, mum. Right. Look at this. 6% increase. Oh, no, I've been through these on City Keeper, but 6% fantastic extra damage. 7.5% extra damage. Fantastic. 3% extra archer damage. Insane. 1% extra archer damage. 1.5 to normal damage. Another 3% to damage. And a skill damage. So just and of course, if she's fighting infantry, another nine percent damage. It r massively stacks up, absolutely huge amounts of damage on her. And then of course, I've put her here because I don't want skill damage because she reduces skill damage because of her her attack talents. Let's have, just have a look at the second skill on Imhopit or whatever his name is. Fifteen percent to a da attack damage. 15% to defense, which remember, this is not an expertise skill. If we go here to get 15% to each uh, attack and defense, you have to expertise this epic commander. Yes, he has a huge amount of more skill damage, but this second skill in Imhop is overlooked and is massively important. It also is easy to fill. In that, uh, unlike Sun Tzu, uh, where you can be unlucky and land in a skill that you don't want as you're trying to fill up the two important ones, like I have, got a, a rather annoying five five skills uh, hit in the in the um, philosophy of war. That's impossible on this Archer Commander. The skills will always go where you want them to. Uh, same again with this Commander. He's really good to use your early universal epic heads in because he won't waste any of them. Now you might notice that all these epic uh, universal epic heads that I've spent all over the place here on my commanders, why haven't I just made Sun Tzu um, expertise? And that's because I used to early expertise Sun Tzu, but then... What I found is uh, I was wasting 80 to 90 heads. By the time you get to the past glory event and you're selling your unwanted epic heads, I had, I think, 80 Sun Tzu heads, um, which if you don't expertise too quickly, then those 80 heads would have gone into his different skills and I would have had more universals to use. Anyhow, let's just see if we can see Tommen in action. Because they say people laugh at me for using a blue commander, but let's just see if we can find someone. Uh, hold on, do I have here? This might be, yeah, I think I did it here. So let's see if we can replay this and watch Tom closely as he's going to fight Sun Tzu, I think. Nope, nope, not this one. I have to find, uh, let me see if I can. Find a Martel or a Sun Tzu to fight. So, who's this? He's got a level 40 Sun Tzu. Okay, challenge. 
Right, there he is. Sun Tzu at the front there. So, uh, let me just make sure I'm going to win this. So, you fight Minamoto. Sun Tzu, I want you to go there. You come down the bottom here. You make sure Sun Tzu dies. Right. Actually, yeah. Okay, now watch Tommen versus Sun Tzu. Yes, there is a little difference. There's a, I've got 3,000 more troops. But let's see what sort of damage output I can do. So remember, I don't have a skill damage. So this needs to be quite a significant uh, trade. Brilliant. So 114 time against 118. Uh, there's two on him now, so it's no longer 114. But... So that's every 10 seconds, that's about 6,000 extra white damage that I'm putting out onto the Sun Tzu. And occasionally, if you watch, I do get, look there, 138. I am still getting the odd skill damage offer, but that's amazing. So that's Sun Tzu. So 2v1, I think she's going to take the Sun Tzu down, considering no skill damage. Look, yep, she did it. Oh, well, the others are coming to help now. Just to give you the idea of what a properly talented... Tommen can do early game. So there we go. So let's have a look. Sunset Canyon. I've talked about team players. I've talked about Tommen and the special uh, back line and front line. Right, let's talk about KVK1. Free to play. In my opinion, there is only two choices. Uh, you can do what you want, but this is what I think other two choices if you are infantry uh i would go i don't think i can do i can uh, can i show you the oh that's embarrassing but anyhow so infantry i would go sun tzu with ethel fled second now lots of people disagree with this but um because of the nature and size of her fan attack when you are in a murder ball, or the way that fights do not happen as duels in KVK. Fights are messy, um, and the more skill damage output you do um, from this, from Ethelfed's fan shape will massively increase your kill points. Um, now, lots of people can do videos where Sun Tzu Bjorn or Bjorn Sun Tzu uh, would be uh, Sun Tzu Ethelfled or Minamoto Kaukau would be Ethelfled. But I w let me just assure you, if you were to have or be able to set up a 10v10 duel where it's just a big mess of a murder ball, Sun Tzu Ethelfleds will always come out on top. They Their output of their damage and the number of targets they are hitting because of the size of her fan forward facing fan shape area damage in my opinion makes this the strongest murder ball kvk infantry over um, open field march it might not be the strongest at dueling there's might be lots of situations where it's not the strongest uh i mean a well a minamoto with 150 percent attack would obviously smash it but it would probably be any other um combination for a free to play sun tzu so for um, for cavalry though, again people would disagree with me, but I would go Belarus. But I wouldn't be too interested in how much of my attack output. What I'm interested on Belarus is my speed. So march speed bonus um, twenty five percent, which is unbelievably valuable. Then if we go into the talents, we have through 9% march on thoroughbreds. We have another 6% uh, on lightning charge. We have the, oh, where is it? The leaving. Here it is, sorry. When troops led by this company depart from a structure, increase speed by 60% for 10 seconds. Then up into cavalry, we got three percent there. I think one of these. And then I'll then reduce speed. Yeah, when you're below fifty percent, increase speed by thirty percent. 
March speed there, March speed there. You can get the March speed of Bella so high that you have the choice whether you fight or not. And of course, with this skill here, let's say you find an injured Sun Tzu, uh, my injured Sun Tzu, Ethel Fled, leaving the murder ball with a little bit of health left. Uh, Belarus can mop them up. And if uh, Belarus gets himself into trouble, he can just march away. He has a choice of whether to fight or not. Now, I put Bella with Cow uh, Cow Cower, uh, but I haven't even opened him yet. Uh, and I like Cow Cow to be 5-5, five, five, sorry, 5-1-1-1. Five, one, one, one. But, of course, I would say don't try your best not to spend Epic Heads in him. I've been incredibly unlucky not to get him from Epic Keys. And I have at least got him to three or four one 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 without spending a single universal head, but I like him to be five one 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 for KVK. Uh, and again, I believe he adds on to the speed, another ten percent speed. Um, so they are my two. They're in my opinion the only two viable open field marches that I would do as free to play. I say I know there's lots of people that would disagree with this, but um i believe so cavalry if i wanted to have a light hospital bill bella and cow cow massively fast march i choose who i fight i choose what i want to do if i want to leave the fight or not or if i'm feeling like getting into a scrap then sun tzu and ethel fled in my opinion the damage output and when your skill damage hits somebody that hasn't targeted you it's just all bonus kills um and that well that's my recommendation i know a lot of people would disagree with that but that's just how i feel uh the last one i want to talk about of course is gathering now uh again like i've chosen not to do fort threes i've chosen not to gather on this account because i want to progress my sunset canyon team i've chosen not to gather so i've got no level 37 gatherers um but of course gatherers are very simple uh, level 37, uh, max superior tools, and of course, when troops led by this commander, um, increase, oh no, no, sorry, that one, the more the better is to get that 6% bonus when you finish gathering. Um, early game, the difference between a commander with, a, to be honest, this extra 25% barely makes a difference. It only makes a difference over a day, over a week, over a month. Then it starts to make a difference, but early game, it's not a huge difference. But if you're not going to have farms, then of course you've got to get some of these commanders, gathering commanders up to 37. But of course you will you will absolutely wreck your Sunset Canyon team, because that's XP that you need on your front line. Uh, just the last thing I'd say about early game commanders is if you're going to go for Sunset Canyon, if you're going to try like I have... My Sunset Canyon team was not made uh, when the monument progressed to the point that Sunset opened. Like many people's team, they set their Sunset Canyon team up. Um, <coughs> they set their Sunset Canyon team up when the first encounter is finished. And all of a sudden, Sunset Canyon is unlocked. Well, I think about my Sunset Canyon team the moment I make my account. I know who my front forefront line is going to be. That way you can get them to level 40. And once you've begun to build the advantage of winning in Sunset Canyon, the advantage then starts to add up. So, 200,000 XP, 200,000 XP, 150,000 XP, 500,000 XP, 200,000 XP. So, the advantage of doing well early in Sunset is that you would do well later in Sunset because of the rewards. And occasionally these gold keys behave, but I've had terrible luck on this account. So, I'm sure this isn't what you're expecting as a commander guide. Um, but, I say, keep an open mind. Why not go through the commanders and just read all the skills? Go through all the talents and read all the talents. And then look to see if there's a commander like Tommen who has a combination of two talents that you're interested in that stack. Look, attack and attack. And then, of course, a 
attack. She stacks up. She hurts other players. She's obviously a bit of a blunt tool in that she uh, is only really useful in Sunset. But that's what I'm interested in, so that's what I went for. Last shout out for uh, Joan. Of course, she needs to be an early expertise, uh, maybe even before Sun Tzu, uh, especially for you low spenders because of the valuable... Because once this is turned to four seconds, uh, the 50 additional rage adds up to an extra two seconds for all of the people in the Sunset Canyon or the expedition multi-levels. And that is really important to expertise. Um, but I've got a few more jobs to do. I haven't done his 5-5 yet. Uh, and of course I haven't progressed. I haven't done Master Strategist 5. So before I do Joan, I've got a few more things I need to tidy up. But anyhow, I hope this video helps somebody. I hope it changes your mindset. Uh, but please keep an open mind. And if I'm wrong, test it and tell me. Thanks for watching.